Welcome to this session by Pathfinder for me. If you are a TISNET 2023 aspirant, stay with me for the next 15 odd minutes and we will be discussing another set of questions related to general awareness. Now these questions are modeled on the type of questions that appear in TISNET every year. Before I start, here is something for you. If you are looking for some strategy related session for testnet preparation you can subscribe to our channel pathfinder for me if you're looking for some content related quantitative aptitude or logical reasoning you can subscribe to our channel mend your math you can also join our telegram channel and whatsapp groups if you are looking to prepare for testnet and searching for some courses you can log on to www.pathfinderforme.com we have some amazing courses for testnet comprehensive courses for testnet 2023 and if you have any queries you can feel free to whatsapp us on 9343921347 and we will gladly help you so here comes the first question so which among the following rulers of magad founded the city of Patliputra on the bank of river Ganga. Your options are Chandragupta Maurya, Ajaj Shatru, Bimbisar and Bindusar. So many of you would think the answer would be Chandragupta Maurya, but the answer is not Chandragupta Maurya, it is Ajat Shatru. Now Ajat Shatru was the son of Bimbisar, who was the founder of Haranyaka dynasty. So Haranyaka dynasty was the first known dynasty of Magad and it was uh, founded in early 5th century BC. Uh, Ajat Shatru founded Patliputra in 5th century BC. And as I told you, Haranyaka dynasty founder was Bimbisar from 546 BC to 494 BC. Ajat Shatru ruled 494, from 494 to 462 BC. Uh, Ajat Shatru is also known to have committed patricide and killed his father Bimbisar. Next question. In which year Ashoka invaded Kalinga? Now we are all aware that this Kalinga war is one of the most prominent wars and one of the largest wars in the history of ancient India. And supposedly it had led to a killing of around 2,50,000 people on either side. So, Kalinga War, which happened on the banks of river Dhauli, which is near the current day Bhubaneswar in 261 BC. And Ashoka was a Mauryan king, as you all know. And the war was between uh, Magad and Kalinga. Kalinga is the current day Odisha. It probably had no specific ruler at that time. And hence, Ashoka attacked Kalinga which was at that juncture an independent state. Now as I said it is presumed to be have fought on Dhali hills on the bank of Daya river and after this battle Ashoka has said to have stopped his policy of expansion and you know he became the peaceful ruler that we know of him today. Next question on summer solstice Sun's rays fall perpendicular on which among the following circles? Your options are Tropic of Capricorn, Equator, Tropic of Cancer and none of these. The correct answer here is Tropic of Cancer. Now there are two solstices in one calendar year and these two solstices are summer and winter solstices. In the summer solstice uh, and you know first of all what are solstice days when sun reaches its maximum north or south positions in the sky and during the summer solstice on 21st of june sun rays are perpendicular to the tropic of cancer and winter solstice on 22nd of december sun rays are perpendicular to the tropic of capricorn so this is your answer tropic of cancer for this question next babar nama was written in which language now babar nama is the uh, you know it's, it's basically the book talking about the history of Babar. Babar as we all know was a Mongol invader in India and he came down and started the Mughal Empire in India. 
he was also uh, uh, fond of writing about his memoirs and his memoirs have been written in babarnama and this has been written in the language known as chaktai or turkic babar incidentally was also the grand grandson of timur he ruled from 1483 to 1530 and the book covers diverse topics such as astronomy geography weapons battles peoples plants animals even poets and poetry next question india's andaman nicobar islands share a maritime border with which of the following your options are thailand thailand and indonesia thailand myanmar and indonesia thailand and sri lanka the correct answer is thailand myanmar and indonesia so the first thing is if you look at this map of india you will easily notice that india shares a land borders with china nepal bhutan pakistan bangladesh and myanmar so these are the countries with which it has a land border then it also has a maritime border with uh, bangladesh and pakistan so bangladesh and pakistan have both land and maritime borders sri lanka shares only a maritime border so this is park street and here you have only a maritime border andaman nicobar island share maritime borders with so he, this is the location of andaman nicobar islands so they have a maritime border with thailand with myanmar and with indonesia now according to the united nations convention on law of seas this was held in 1982 and the maritime borders have been governed and covered under this particular law and what does this law say this law says that for any country the maritime border will be considered 22 kilometers from the coast so boundary of a country is 22 kilometers or 12 nautical miles of any coast next which of the following with which of the following is sarkaria commission related your options are center and state relations interstate relations election reforms and judicial reforms the correct answer is center and state relations now sarkaria commission was set up in 1983 to examine the nature of center and state relations in various areas this commission came up with 247 recommendations largely the commission did not change the status quo largely but it still came up with 247 recommendations most of them were not implemented by the government but they suggested changes within the constitutional framework of india the commission was headed by justice rajender singh sarkaria and hence the name sarkaria commission next question which among the following articles of constitution of india says that all public places are open to all citizens your options are article 152 article 162 article 17 and article 18 the correct answer in this case is article 15 to it states explicitly that every citizen of india has equal access to all public spaces if you are a citizen what about article 16 to article 16 to talks about no discrimination in employment on the basis of religion gender race caste place of origin etc so if you are a citizen of india there will not be any discrimination in employment what about article 17 article 17 talks about another very important aspect untouchability it abolished untouchability and article 18 talks about abolition of titles so during the british period it was assumed that british government gave titles and sought favors which were harmful for our country as a whole so they gave titles to people and then sought favors from them and this is the reason the government abolished titles of any form for any citizen the state cannot give any title other than military or academy that is what article 18 says and no citizen of india can accept title from any other country 
similarly if there is a foreign citizen who is working in india he cannot accept any title from a foreign country unless he seeks explicit permission from the president of india so these are about the articles next what can be the maximum number of members in lok sabha so the maximum number of members in lok sabha can be 552 so how 552 how what is the break up 530 from states 20 from union territories and up till recently two members from the anglo indian community were also a part of india's lok sabha but wide constitutional amendment 104 this practice of having two representatives of the anglo indian community has been done away with so now uh, we don't have any representatives from the anglo indian community something about the current lok sabha we are in the 17th lok sabha prime minister modi is the 16th and the 17th prime minister of india and the current lok sabha has 543 members and om birla from bjp is the speaker of the current lok sabha next question in india the power to grant citizenship lies with which of the following president prime ministers ministry of home affairs and state government so this subject is covered under the citizens act citizenship act of 1955 and it grants explicit rights to the minister of home affairs ministry of home affairs to grant citizenship to people of foreign origin next question the trishna wildlife sanctuary tws is located in which state your options are odisha jharkhand west bengal and tripura the correct answer is tripura located in the south tripura district of tripura it is known for indian gaur or bison which is the main attraction of this sanctuary so that was the last question of the series in case you wish to have access to more such sessions please subscribe to our channel pathfinder for me and if you are looking for some content rela related to quantitative aptitude or reasoning subscribe to our channel mend your math you could also join our whatsapp group uh, and telegram channel that's all from me right now thank you very much and in case you wish to connect to me with me directly you can whatsapp me on this number thank you